So we've actually learned previously how to solve equations. So just as a review, because that's what we're talking about today is solving equations. Just as a review, and you don't have to write this, I'm going to solve this problem. So I'm going to draw my line. I want x's on one side, everything else on the other. So if I need to get my x's alone, first thing I do is on this left side over here, got to get rid of these parentheses. Again, you don't have to write this part. So I have 5x, and then 3 times 5x is a positive 15x, and 3 times 10 is positive 30 and that equals 15x. And if I need all my x's over here on the left side, that means that 30's gotta go. It's currently a positive 30, so when I move it, it's gonna become a negative 30, and then it's gone. And again, I need all my x's on the left, that means 15x on the right also is in the wrong place. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that, and then it's gonna become a minus 15x, and then that's gone. So if I were to take the time to rewrite this equation, I really have, 5x plus 15x minus 15x equals negative 30. Well, I'm going to combine my like terms because I have some of those. So I have this 5x plus 15x minus 15x. This plus 15x minus 15x, they cancel. So I'm really just left with 5x equals negative 30. And then to get x completely by itself, my very last step, I need to divide by 5. So I end up with x equals negative 6. Not a terrible problem to do. However, there is an easier way we can do it, and there's a way that we can actually use the calculator to help us with this. So it requires us to think of this really as two separate, instead of being one equation, we're thinking of this as two equations. The first equation being 5x plus 3 times 5x plus 10. So I'm going to put that as y1, so 5x, please write this down, 5x plus 3 times 5x plus 10. That's my first equation. Well, then my second equation would be what's on the right side of this line, which would be my 15x, so that's going to be y2. Well now, instead of having one equation, I have two equations, and if I have two equations, that means I have a system and it means that I can graph it and I can find the intersection. So I want you to go ahead and go to y equals, so open your calculators, turn them on, and go to y equals, and in y1 you're going to type 5x plus 3 times 5x plus 10, and in y2 you're going to type 15x. So make sure you're in y equals, and this is what you should see. In y1 you should have that 5x plus 3 times 5x plus 10. In y2 you should have 15x and then we're going to get ready to graph. So remember that I am looking for where these two lines intersect. Oops, my calculator turned off. There we go. I'm looking for where these two lines intersect. First thing I'm going to do is I want to hit zoom, and I want to go to zoom 6 because I want to go to my standard window, just my normal looking window, so I can see my line. So there's line 1, and there's line 2. So they almost look parallel. I'm going to tell you they're not. So normally we would just zoom out a whole lot to find it. That's not really going to work on this problem because I know what this problem looks like. So we're going to change something. I want you to go to Window, and I want you to change your Y minimum to negative 100 and your Y maximum to positive 100. So you should be looking at two things. Your y minimum should, your, in your window, your y minimum should be negative 100. Your y maximum should be positive 100. Then we're going to hit graph again. It's going to re-graph it for us. And there's line 1. And there's line 2. And notice we can see our intersection is somewhere right over here. Well, to find the intersection, we can press the buttons second, trace. I want to pick number 5 right here. So 5, and then enter, enter, enter. And it tells me what my intersection is. It says my intersection is the ordered pair negative 6, negative 90. Well, remember, the ordered pair was negative 6, negative 90. And look at what our answer was, negative 6. So we just figured out that we can actually use the calculator to find our answer for us. So we're going to do a couple of these problems together very quickly. So we're going to start with problem 1. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my line through my equal sign to still split it in half. And we're going to type the left side in y1 and the right side in y2. So go to y equals and type the left side in y1 and the right side in y2. So I have my two equations in there. I put the first one 
12 minus 3x, the left side in y1, the right side negative 6x in y2. And I'm going to hit, again, I want to go to zoom 6, so I want to go to look at my normal window. So there's line 1, and there's line 2. I can't see where they intersect. I know it's going to be somewhere like up here, so I should have to figure out where that is. So I'm going to hit zoom out. Normally zooming out is a good option, it just wasn't on the first problem. I'm going to press enter, and then I want to press enter again, so it'll re-graph it for me. There's one line. And there's my other line. So I can see that the intersection is right in here. So I'm going to press the buttons second, trace. I'm going to go to number five. And I'm going to press enter, enter, enter. And it tells me that my answer, which is really awesome, is x equals negative four. So I don't have to go through all the trouble to solve this problem by hand. I can just type it in the calculator and get my answer as x equals negative four. So moving on to problem two. Again, I'm going to draw my line to split my two sides in half, and I'm going to label them. The left side's going to go in Y1. The right side's going to go in Y2. So I'm going to go ahead and type those in. So I have 5X minus 6 minus 2X. It's going to go in Y1. And then Y2, I'm going to type in 3 times X minus 2. And then I'm going to hit zoom 6, because I want to go look at my normal-looking graph. So there's the first line. I can't actually even see the second line. So I've got to figure out what that means. Why don't I see why do I only see one line? Well, I'm going to go look at my table because there's something unique about this. So I'm going to go to second and graph. And I want you to look at your y values. Notice that all the way down your table, your y's are exactly the same. Negative 12, negative 9, negative 6, negative 3, 0, 3, 6. Since these are exactly the same, that means this equation and this equation are actually the same. Well, if they're the same, then graphically that means that my lines are actually drawn on top of each other. Here's one line and here's the other line. So that means that there is an infinite number of solutions because those two tables were exactly the same all the way down. There is an infinite number of solutions. So moving on to problem three, I'm going to split my equation in half. Again, I want to put the left side in y1 and the right side in y2, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now notice it does say the letter Z in this problem. That doesn't change the way we do it. So when we type it in here in the calculator, we're still going to type in X. And we're going to use, we can use this button right here for X. So it's instead of 7 minus 5Z, we're going to put 7 minus 5X in Y1. And then 17 plus 5X in Y2. So I've got my two equations typed in. I'm going to go to Zoom 6. Zoom 6. It's going to just do my normal graph for me. So there's one line. There's my other line. So it looks like they're going to intersect somewhere right up here. So I'm going to zoom out so I can find that. Zoom 3, enter, and let it regraph. So there's one line. There's my other line. So I'm looking for the intersection here. So to find it, I'm going to press second, trace, want number 5. Enter, 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 and it tells me that my answer, my solution to this problem is going to be x equals negative 1. And there's my answer. So I want to take a minute to make sure you have your steps written down, because I know some of you are big steps people. Like, you need to know, this is what I do first. So the first thing you're going to do is type the right side of the equation. I'm sorry, we'll start with the left side. We're going to put the left side... in y1, and we're going to put the right side of our equation in y2. The second thing you're going to do is you want to zoom so you can see the intersection. Because remember, if you can't see the intersection, the calculator can't find the intersection. And then the third thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do second, trace, and I want to pick number 5. 
and then I want to hit the enter button three times. So the enter button times three, because I want to hit enter, enter, enter. And this is what's going to give us, this is what's going to give us our solution. This is what is going to give us our solution. I also want to remind you of the types of solutions so I can have two lines that intersect one time and so they have one solution. Remember if I have two lines that are parallel these two lines have no solution. If I have two lines that are parallel they have no solution. And then lastly my third option is that if I have two lines like we had in problem two where they were the same line, that means if they're the same line, they're going to have the same tables. If they have the same table, then that means that there is an infinite number of solutions. So I'm going to ask for the video to be paused. I want you guys to work out problems four, five, and six. And then when you finish, we're going to unpause the video and we're going to check our answers. So for problem four, we put the left side over here in Y1 and the right side in Y2. This was the graph you should have gotten. It should have looked something like this. I was zoomed out a little bit, so yours may have looked a little different. But no matter what, you should have come up with the intersection was X equals 2. On problem five, I had um, my equations and Y1 was 4X minus 3X and Y2 was X minus 8. So when I graph those, these two lines are actually parallel. So they actually have no solution because no matter what, they are never going to intersect. And lastly, number six. Again, I'm putting my left side in Y1 and my right side in Y2. And when I graph them, then they gave us the intersection of X equals six. So that would be my answer. So that's all you need to do. I'm going to leave these steps here in case you need them, if we need to pause the video again. But again, these are our steps. We're putting it in the calculator, and these are our possible options. One solution, two solution, or no solution, I'm sorry. And don't forget, we can also have a possibility of infinitely many solution, or infinite number of solutions. And that's if they have the same table. Last but certainly not least, I hope that each of you guys has a wonderful Thanksgiving, and I hope that you have a lot to be thankful for. I am very thankful for each and every one of you. See you guys when you get back from your break.